right. Well, then, uh, whose uh, opinions are they if they're not the stations? Uh, they're mine. I'm sorry. I was just running back from getting coffee so I could be here in time to say hello. Uh, this is the Educated Retirement. And good afternoon, by the way. We are here on KMET, ABC News, and Smart Talk at uh, 1490 AM where we uh, contemplate retirement and how to prepare for retirement and how you don't do what I did, although I thought I was doing everything right, but I'm still not retired. So we're going to uh, discuss tools to make retirement more better, easier, more productive. So write this number down and give me a call right here and now. 951-922-3532 and remember to keep those tabs open always on your browser not only for KMET 1490 but the educated retirement radio.com for more questions and answers and almost daily blog updates and I am here to uh, tell you that I do have a day job, and I know you're saying, thank God he's got a job. Uh, my day job is doing reverse mortgages and only reverse mortgages after doing mortgages of all kinds for 40 some years, or I don't know how old I am anymore. That's in the 70s, do I have enough fingers? Anyway. Uh, my NMLS number is 384465 in my Department of Real Estate because I have that also, but I do not do anything but reverse mortgage loans. S792630. So I want your questions. I need your questions. I need, hear that? Need. Your input and ideas, subjects to talk about, be it the HECM, home equity conversion, or anything else. So, we will today be talking with, we hope, uh, Christopher Bissonette. I'm looking at his picture right now and he's smiling, but you don't see him yet. And uh, we will get to him in just a couple of minutes. I'll just tell you though, that he focuses on holistic financial planning. That sounds pretty cool. Financial well-being. And he is a feature speaker on financial literacy and the recurring guest on ESPN, and I am too, by the way, and NBC Radio, and now, big announcement, on ABC right here with us, and hopefully a whole lot more in the future. So, before I take off, one last question. Do you really believe a retired person, we're not talking to me again, a retired person really should have a house payment? Actually, I don't. I have a reverse mortgage. So, and and so happy about it. And do I make payments? Yes, I do. But I have a, a reason for that. So let's talk about that. But it's always best if you make the choice of whether you want to make that payment this month or not. You be the bank. Don't let the bank be the bank. And with all that being going on, uh, it's time to be another break. So I will speak with you in a couple of minutes. And you're always able to watch shows in progress, shows throughout history. And Sean, I think you can watch shows in the future too. Is that correct? I After don't know about that one, Jay. <laughs> Uh, isn't it time? We better read uh, Theory of Relativity again. I think, you know, time is a little uh, confusing sometimes, I think. But you know what's not confusing, but what people confuse is a reverse mortgage because a reverse simply allows you to make better use of your money now and in the future, see? So we can control some of the future. It allows for an increase in the financial value for the entire family. Don't know why? We can talk about it, but we won't. Give me a call. We'll talk more about it. But, you know, from time to time, I do have guests, and we talk specifically about that kind of thing. So um, I want this show, though, not to necessarily be an infomercial. So, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of things. 
that uh, hopefully will help. And today, financial uh, literacy. I had trouble. Why did I have trouble with that word literacy? Anyway, uh, how to preserve your wealth. And our uh, guest, Chris Bissonette, financial planner for 25 years, Bachelor of Science degree in Business Management Systems, Arizona State, Regents Academy Scholarship, and FINRA uh, slash SEC Series 72465, uh, you know, all those numbers, you know what all those numbers it means it's good. So uh, let's get to him as soon as we can. And we're going to do that in just a couple of minutes here. Uh, he's also a vice president of Irvine Holistic Chamber of Commerce, uh, a member of the National Association of Insurance and, fi- and Financial Advisors, and uh, past president of Orange County ASU Alumni Association. And you know we go through our regular uh, third section of the most important things on the schedule other than our guest and sometimes there's not enough time in the third schedule and I really really do not want to take time away from our guests so real quick in a minute or two today is the last show before 4th of July so happy 4th of July happy birthday USA It's National Bomb Pop Day, which precedes the 4th of July, starting and this started in 1955 when James Merritt came up with the idea of fashioning a popsicle in the shape of a six-finned bomb. So you can have your sugar and your, uh, well, let's just call it an explosion of sugar. So, uh... It's also National Paul Bunyan Day, Mighty Lumberjack with a Blue Ox. And remember, you know, in case you forgot, he is the one who carved out the Grand Canyon. And uh, he was introduced in literature to ni- in 1906. I thought it was way back before I was born. But anyway, uh, tomorrow is uh, National Camera Day. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, film versus digital, but I don't want to do it right now because it's time for a break. And if we don't have a break, we don't have a show. So see you in a few. Seven twenty-four sixty-five. Uh, you know all those num- You know what all those numbers it means. It's good. So uh, let's get to him as soon as we can, and we're going to do that in just a couple of minutes. Here, uh, he's also a vice president of Irvine Holistic Chamber of Commerce, uh, a member of the National Association of Insurance and. And financial advisors, and uh, past president of Orange County ASU Alumni Association, and you know we go through our regular uh, third section of the most important things on the schedule, other than our guest, and sometimes there's not enough time in the third schedule and I really really do not want to take time away from our guests so real quick in a minute or two today is the last show before 4th of July so happy 4th of July happy birthday USA it's National Bomb Pop Day which precedes the 4th of July, starting and this started in 1955 when James Merritt came up with the idea of fashioning a popsicle in the shape of a six-finned bomb. So you can have your sugar and your, uh, well, let's just call it an explosion of sugar. So uh, it's also National Paul Bunyan Day. Mighty Lumberjack with a Blue Ox. 
And remember, you know, in case you forgot, he is the one who carved out the Grand Canyon. And uh, he was introduced in literature to in 1906. I thought it was way back before I was born. But anyway, uh, tomorrow is uh, National Camera Day. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, film versus digital. But I don't want to do it right now because it's time for a break. And if we don't have a break, we don't have a show. So see you in a few. Got pest control again just because I'm on the air. No, it's not going to work. Not that kind of pest control. But, uh, you know, I'll try to make it less pesky for you this time by doing a little less talking. And our guest will do a little more talking. But welcome back to the Educated Retirement here on KMET 1490 AM. ABC Smart Radio News and Talk. So remember, call us, 951-922-3532, 951-922-3532, and keep us in mind. And if you're not ready to call in and ask Chris something right now, put this, put down any questions you may have for him. And he's going to tell you how to get a hold of him, and I'm going to give you another off-air number for me anyway. So, Chris, go ahead, and uh, you can kind of tell us a little. I told a little bit about you before when you weren't on the air. Uh, probably not nearly enough. So go ahead. You know, I did mention that uh, what you were certified with, you've been a plan, financial planner for 125 years, no, 25 years, and uh, that kind of thing. And I did mention also that you're an expert on college planning and financial aid. And that may be something we really, on this show or another, want to concentrate on um, a lot. And also, I think this is good. You're a member, I think it's all good, but you're a member the Society of Financial Awareness. So. Financial literacy is something that uh, most of us think we've got some, but probably not, right? Yes, yeah, so thank you, Jay, and uh, thank you, KMET uh, Radio, for having me on. Uh, I enjoy uh, spreading the word of financial literacy, or sometimes I call it financial illiteracy, because Americans need help. Yes, all people need help. So as far as very quickly, um, I also chair the Financial Education Task Force for the Irvine Chamber of Commerce. And that's where I kind of go to the schools to uh, help our youth really understand how to do some of the basic financial skills that 60% of Americans fail on how to or really don't know how to do, such as budgeting, such as what sort of mortgage to get, such as credit cards. And there's just too much today for Americans to really handle and absorb that simply wasn't around 30 years ago. And that's what's causing the problem. So one, financial literacy crisis, you can see on my screen here, I've got a cover of investment news. Uh -huh. It's actually referred to as a crisis, uh, that's number one. And number two is, some people ask me, what does that mean, financial literacy? Do you think your yeah. uh, listeners know what that means, Jay? Well, I think we all know what literacy is supposed to mean, but what degree do we understand? That's a whole different thing. Yeah, so they say financial literacy, understanding basics, basic financial concepts and 60 uh percent -huh. of americans aren't able to do that and you know if i can just go through a very quick history on things jay you know 30 years ago or let's just say your parents for example they didn't have social media they didn't have cell phones they didn't have text they didn't have emails they didn't have internet they didn't have all this noise coming you know, out. You know what? I didn't have that either when I was a kid or even a young adult, but go me ahead. Either. Me either. I didn't have it either. And so so most our parents and, and us for the most part, we grow up, we grew up with not 
maybe you came home and watched the TV after school, right? That was kind of your media. But now people are bombarded with information, uh, robocalls, it, so it's just sensory oh. overload, number one. So number two, this is the problem today. So 30 years ago, our parents, us, a retirement plan was a pension at work, which you really had nothing to do with, and your health insurance was through work. You had nothing to do with that. Right. You wanted to hire a financial person. Um, usually you would go through the bank to do your mortgage. You right. would hire a stockbroker to buy stock if you wanted to. And you would maybe have an outside insurance person to provide like auto insurance and things of that nature. That was it. That was it. That's all you bought. But today you've got to go get your own health insurance or pick a plan each year, which as you know, with Medicare and that itself is completely confusing. Then people are supposed to also pick on their benefits. Do I do disability one, disability two, long-term care option? Now we've added health savings account and flexible. Yeah, care. yeah, yeah. So for the most part, when October rolls around and people get a notification, if they have insurance, right, if they have it, that they have to pick their plan by November or whatever, or the end of October. Most people, they say, whatever I did last year, because it's too confusing. Well, let's compound that with all these new accounts that have also popped up, such as Roth IRAs, even traditional IRAs weren't around until the 70s. Now you have 401ks to put retirement money into, maybe a SEP, maybe a solo K. So retirement, there's too many options. Yeah, I don't, personally, I don't know what half of those mean. Yeah, and some people don't. Simplify employee pension, 401k. And then you have all these new insurance. There's renter's insurance. That wasn't around years ago. Now you have, uh, you, you have tuition insurance, which I, have no, I had no idea there was such a thing. So your yeah. kid drops out of school, you have insurance to get back some of your tuition money. Whoa, wow. I didn't, that's a new one, right? And then you've got, wow. also, then you've got pet insurance, right? Pet, what, are you kidding me? There's now yeah. pet insurance. So there's all these different insurances. Wow. Um, and then now there's all these different investment options. So mortgage options, as you know, are more complex today than they've ever been. So most Americans are just lost financially. They don't, it's not as if they don't make good money and some of them may have assets, even the rich people. But as far as organizing them and understanding them and understanding how they affect one another is what's the financial literacy <clears throat> crisis. Absolutely. And you know, it used to be, and maybe in some circles it's thought still that, hey, you don't need a financial advisor unless you're a millionaire. You know, when I was young, that's what kind of was going around. No, we don't have a financial advisor. What are you kidding? Well, back then, that's I started crazy. business 25 years ago. Yeah. There used to be a minimum to open an account at a lot of brokerage firms, which was like $5,000. And so I even got that objection when I started, like, don't you need 5,000 to open? And I do have accounts like that now that are 5,000 to open, but what, what people need is they just need to just get their stuff organized. You can just get it organized. You're just gonna feel better about it too, because it creates a lot of stress in, in the, um, for the family. So number one, right, right. conflict, and it's just because your wife goes, hey, how are we doing financially? And in your head, you go, well, checking savings, retirement, the HSA, I, credit cards, student loans. I, I think we're doing good, but it's just a mess. It's incredible. You know, when you had said student loans, that's going to be a whole nother show probably. But when I was supposed to be in my prime, you know, 40 years, 40 years ago, whatever it was, uh, you know, yes, part of a financial plan was sending your kid or kids to school. So if it's that, if that was going to be based on what my own experience was, well, what is it, 700 bucks a semester, something like that? Mm -hmm. Well, by the time us older people got to got the privilege of paying for our children or paying our for our grandchildren's education, higher education, it was no longer $700 a semester. So it was very hard to plan. Yeah, the, and what's interesting, you bring that up, as far as this financial literacy crisis, the number one thing fueling it in the United States is the student loan crisis. That's like the pinnacle of the whole thing, because again, that these exorbitant amounts of money for college wasn't around 30 years ago. 
college has gone up 30% just in five years. Wow. And wow. just in five years. And it's because governments aren't funding them. And so there wasn't this planning around it. Um, so that's that's a huge, huge problem right now. And you're seeing it in obviously mainstream news, front page news every day. Well, well also like, I remember when I was a kid, I think I mentioned on the show last week or the time before, uh, you know, when a salary, when a decent salary was fifteen or 20000 a year, a house might have been 35000 Or let's make it simple. A house was twice as much as a yearly salary. Well, that ratio no longer applies. Hmm, that is interesting. Well, here's the other thing to bring up. Um, 30 years ago, right, if people made hundred grand, that was a lot of money. The salaries still, there's still that six-figure number. So salaries haven't kept up with the cost of everything else. So absolutely. So that's the other problem is schools have gone from let's say 20 grand a year to 60, but salaries have been stayed relatively steady. It's in very like so that's also created this problem. And I think that makes a bigger problem for people my age or old some of the older people because the younger people at least now they see the ratio of how much they make to how much they need to spend to how much they need to save or put into accounts. People like myself and somewhat younger than me and older like that, we don't have that experience. We get shocked as we get older. Yes, and here's another thing to add to that. The number one category or sector of people filing for bankruptcy is in the United States, it's seniors. That's yeah, the well, it's, it's easy to growing. say. Fastest growing in the United States is seniors. And again, it ties into, we got all these accounts and, I just, I, I got lost in the loans and I'm just, I, I, oh shit, we got no money. Well, on top of that is healthcare. Healthcare, that's the number one. I mean, that's, we I didn't think that's, we were gonna live this long, number one. And number two, the cost of healthcare has gone up, you know, just like the cost of housing, just like the cost of schools. Well, you're right. I consider elder care in the United States the number one problem in the U.S because it is so expensive and I'm certified in long-term care. There's, and the plan is uh, buy insurance after you get sick. Oh, can't do oh, that. Yeah, right, right. And then it's, all right, well, the kids will take care of us. No one plans to be their parent's parent. And it creates a lot of stress on the caregiver, which 40% of the time is the daughter in the whole relationship. She's caregiving for mom or dad. She ends up having all these problems because yeah. it's so stressful. No kidding. It's crazy. But that's uh, it's just one more reason why, you know, one thing you said in that last uh, group of sentences was, you know, you buy health insurance after you need it or you get or long -term something. Long-term care. Yeah, right. And then they go right. to the doctor. Right, right. It's, it's right. just like, you know, you want to be, uh, you know, I guess it was the Boy Scouts that said be prepared, right? If you're not prepared, you're going to overpay, you're going to get less service. It's just not going to work out. You have to be ready well in advance. And that's why I tell people, and I got this, uh, the first uh, the idea about a household board of directors from Ron, and you and I are both on Ron Siegel's show on ESPN quite a bit. Uh, you have to have a household board of directors, which includes the two of us, other people that you, the listener, trust, and you need to reach out not after you need one of us, you need to interview us for that board of directors, and you need to do it well before the need ever comes up. No, that's good, that's very profound. I like the board of directors. Yeah, well, you know, I got that from, I, I copied it from, from Ron, but that's okay. It's that, smart, it's smart. You should have, you know, and again, everything's holistic now. You should have an estate planner, insurance agent, financial planner, your attorney, you know, your mortgage broker, your real estate agent. It's your trusted core people. Yeah, absolutely. Your trust attorney, because attorneys are specialized like doctors. You need more than one. Yes, you do. Absolutely. And the same with uh, a lot of financial people and insurance people. You know, you need to find out, you know, not everybody is going to get along with every personality. That's why these people need to interview us, call us, talk to us, and, you know, and learn, first of all, whether you're going to work with us or not. Everybody needs to learn. 
and I'm never done learning. So no matter what it is, I always sign up for another class or another session of this or another talk or another whatever it takes. Smart. So you say holistic. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how that applies to the uh, financial world? You know, that's a that's very good. Well, I just, you know what it is is everything in financial planning today has gone to this holistic model or it's a holistic blank so essentially the financial planners today instead of you know being a stockbroker and selling you stock mm -hmm. or being an insurance agent and offering maybe life insurance they should be more of a cfo they're your chief financial officer so ideally as i tell my clients they should be coming to me when they want to buy a house when they want to buy at least a car buy a car credit cards, their kids are going to school. Any financial decision they make in their life, they should be going to this CFO or like you said, a board of directors. And then my job is to connect them to the right professionals that I have, you know, essentially vetted out that I can uh, vouch yeah. for. Now who's gonna be the CEO? Usually the wife, right? The wife usually is the boss. So yeah, yeah, and you know, no matter what, you got to make her feel that she is anyway, right? And eighty percent of the time, she also manages the checkbook. Uh huh. Is, however, when it comes to again all the complex stuff we have in this world now, which again, I'm pretty good with it after twenty five years, but I don't know everything. HSA, FSA. Oh my gosh, when did they add these things, right? And it's now there's reverse purchase. I'm learning about. Um, but you should be able to go to one person or at least your team and say, hey, I'm thinking about buying another property. How does that compare? And hopefully that person has a big picture of everything because it's all interrelated. People will say to me, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. I say, well, I have to see everything first. Do you own right. it? Do you, I can't just tell you to do something without knowing the, the big picture. Uh, you know, we're going too far here without you telling everyone how to get a hold of you all different ways that you want them to know. Oh, so that's... I want to do that at least twice, so let's do it right. first time now. Well, I'd like to share with them, again, you know, my, my objective is to, um, and I don't even like using the word help people. I like to advise people. I like to uh, change people's lives. Uh, and the way that they do that, they can check me out. I always tell people, check me out. Uh, the easiest thing to do, the only most people 90% of the time are going to Google you anyways. Right. If you just Google Christopher Bissonette, um, I'm sure I, I come up probably at first page a lot, but you could put Christopher oh, you do. I, there, There's a couple of people with your name around, but there you're a, there. You're there, there. I did it. There's Canadian. It's a Canadian DJ usually comes up first. Christopher <laughs> Bissonette. Um, but if you put Christopher Bissonette, Irvine. Then I come up like half the page and then I represent today. I'm talking about SOFA, the Society for Financial Awareness. And what we do is we provide education to communities on financial literacy topics. I'm doing one next month for Orange Coast College where I'll be talking oh, to the dean, a lot of their um, professors because they want someone to come in and say, hey, tell us about budgeting and um, spending. That's a big concern of ours right now. How do we do that? How do we manage that? And at the same time, I'm gonna talk about other things as well, maybe wills and trusts, or their benefits that they have at work, which they don't even understand. So um, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Now I do have LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And most of those, if you put in Christopher Bissonette, I'll come right at the top, you can follow me. I post almost daily onto LinkedIn and Twitter, which I've already posted today, and as well as Facebook. Um, I also have Instagram and a YouTube channel as well. All right. So you're not hard to find, but I, do you want to give out a phone number or anything? Sure, else? sure. You can I have my office. Uh, I have an office in Manhattan Beach, and I also have an office in Irvine. My Irvine number is the best, which is 949-590-9940. People can call me anytime with any question. There's no charge for that. Um, I am a fee-based advisor, which could be for another show, but with the SOFA, my give back is I'm just here to educate, show people the right way to do things. Yeah, that's now, you, because you're in one area, 
I think you told me yesterday or the day before that uh, you visit clients. How far away have you visited them? Not that you're going every day on house calls. I prefer a five mile radius, five mile radius. Um, or I usually, I, I would say seriously though, about 80% of my meetings I do through the computer, usually Zoom. Um, but again, I've had, I, I mean, what's the farthest I've driven from a point that I've driven from Phoenix to Lake Havasu City um, about 20 years ago? Twice, twice, uh -huh. twice. I think it was six hours, so that yeah. was the part. But of course, what, what, what I do is uh, so. a little more face to face in a lot of things that are over, you know, right there. So I've driven from, I haven't gone any farther north for business in the last few years than uh, uh, Santa Rosa. And in fact, it is, uh, and it was yesterday, it was a person from uh, Forestville up there, Gail, who had a birthday, so happy birthday, Gail. And, uh, but I love to drive, I love trains, I love to drive, I love to go anywhere. I mean, yesterday was, uh, a closing uh, document uh, ceremony, I call it a ceremony because it's success in uh, uh, Culver City. But, uh, you know, I know the good restaurants. Obviously, you can see what I look like. So, yes, I know where the good restaurants are and I try to enjoy the trips as much as I can. How long, how long was the trip? How long did it take you to get back? Uh, well, it took me an hour to get there. It took me about two hours and five minutes to get back. Too. But it would have been a little longer if I left right after the meeting. So well, you stalled it. And... I yeah, you know, I went for some great fish tacos at a place called uh, Detour Bistro or whatever, right there on Washington Boulevard, which is great. I think really good fish tacos. So good. So you know, we're talking advice here, and fish tacos are part of the advice, right? Love but it. you know, I'd like us to be doing some of these more specialized kind of presentations and you know we can get to all the areas hopefully in the next uh, whatever time there is we've got left here on earth uh, to all of these areas where uh, you know where people are listening because they're listening pretty wide area and you know for any questions any calls any referrals or whatever give Chris or myself a call anytime my number, by the way, let's get out of the way, my off-air number, notice how I had to turn to look at it, 866-955-2233, 866-955-2233. The 866 number is because, you know, if you're calling from, uh, uh, you know, Eureka or something, this doesn't tell you I'm so far away. So, you know, sometimes people like that kind of thing. But... I'm there whenever, and I'm there hopefully with a lot of advice how to, you know, and what I do is financial. I mean, the reverse mortgages and the education of it is absolutely hand in hand with financial planning, making the best use of your money, making the best use of your equity. So I'm happy to work with financial planners. Some agree, some don't agree, but that's okay. That's what well, we're I all here for. Just, yes. you know, I agree. And, and, and reverse mortgages were on the cover of Investment News, which is my favorite publication, about a few years back, how they made a big comeback. And now the planners need to be familiar with them and use them as a strategy, right. which obviously I have with you. So I think yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, because, you know, you can just keep making the payments the way you were before, but now you've got... Uh, You've got more more flexibility. It's something that if you see my picture, you notice I don't have a lot of flexibility. But um, you you want flexibility with your finances, especially you when you're a senior. Right. You don't have to put six hundred thousand dollars into a property and have no money and be stressed on what to do. Right. When you can do three hundred and then get the other three hundred, maybe at five percent, and then now right. you've got some. It's just. I think it blows people away, I'm sure, when they really figure, when you really comes to the end of that celebration meeting, Jay, where you're like, you got to come on with this amount of money. I think sometimes yeah. you're like, really? That's it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got such more choices in your future. When you've got something like that, like a product like that. So, and, and I know another one of your real specialties is um, helping people pay for their kids for education 
And I know this show, we'll have more shows. I know on this show, we're just bouncing around a little bit just because you you do you do know and educate on several different, not too many, but sev- not too many, enough. Because all of these disciplines are attached to each other. Not always. Sometimes you're working with a younger person, with a kid going to school. Sometimes an older person with a grand a granddaughter going to school and themselves looking at health care, all of those things intermingle. And you've done great, great things that I understand, that I know, in uh, getting, uh, getting kids into and through school without the parents and grandparents going broke and losing their home. Well, I think that was well said. You know, it's funny you bring that up. Here is the almost a current issue of investment news where it says buried under college costs. So you got the parents here buried under the college costs. Uh-huh. And, and I will say in, without getting into too much detail, I call it the college planning dilemma and student loan crisis. That's the presentation I give. And it's because the college planning process is so complicated, way more complicated than any estate planning out there. Every school does it different the FAFSA and the EFC reduction. But in, in summary, I'll just give you one example. I have a client of mine whose son was planning to go to a school in Colorado. And I said, great. He hired me to do his college planning for him and financial aid. Mm-hmm. I lowered his expected family contribution from what he would have paid to what he's going to pay by 7000 a year. So potentially 28000 right off the bat based on how he answered some questions on the FAFSA. And I'm gonna try and lower it again by another 2,000 a year next year by claiming his kids, on the, long story short, some other kids as dependents. And then, I so the school for Colorado State was 17,000 a year. That was the expected family contribution. SC, which is twice as much, 70,000 a year, is $4,000 a year. Wow. So, about 400% less for a school that is, again, another one with Colorado State, but it's a state school and it's just, you know, it's 25000 a year, but it's going to cost you seventeen. You can go to a school that costs 70000 a year for four. Wow, that blows me away and probably a whole lot of listeners out there. So I can almost afford to go to SC? Well, if you could get in and if you get your expected family contribution, which is zero to a million dollars, if you can get that down, the lowest yeah. is nineteen hundred dollars for USC because they use the institutional method. Then yes, if you could get in, you could go for about nineteen hundred a year if you get your ESC down. Wow. They will come up the school will pay sixty nine thousand for you to attend there. Why is that? Because they have four billion dollars of endowment. Who knows this? Nobody knows this. <laughs> but I might take up too much room because they may not give it to me. I take up two desks instead of well, one. You have to apply for two scholarships. All right. Oh, yeah. You know, that's why I love talking to you because you always have some kind of a way to solve things. We're, so, we're problem solvers, correct? That's it, man. That's it. Solving problems. Okay, why don't you go ahead and give your, I told you this was going to go faster than we wanted it to. Uh, you, you got some good plans for the 4th of July? Well, as you know, Jay, I have a one-year-old and a five-year-old, so yeah. I have no plans. Okay, <laughs> they, they are your plans, right? So, uh, we'll be hanging out at the Legacy Club, um, I told you I'm barbecuing, on, okay. uh, on July 4th, so. All right. You know, so go ahead. We've got one minute left. Throw out your uh, contact information one more time. I think yeah, they've heard mine enough. I would say is just uh, Bissonette is my last name. B is in boy. I S S O N N E T T E. Bissonette. If that's my LinkedIn name and my Twitter name are both Bissonette. So that's easy. If you do want to just follow me on Facebook, it's Preserve and Build Wealth. And my phone number again is 949-590-9940. Thanks for having me on today. Well, thanks for being here and helping all of us. I really look forward to you being around more. Great. Well, I look forward to it. All right. Say hello to all of the family and all of its extensions that you have. And have a great weekend. 
and everybody else listening, especially if you're stuck on the freeway going home at this hour, whatever, have a great 4th of July and this weekend. And remember that uh, Kaplan will be here on the same corner in front of the cigar store next week. Take care. Oh, <laughs>